So chapter 7 and 8 come to us as a sort of a story within a story. We have Hester going to meet with the governor and some of the dignitaries of the community, including ministers and uh, including Chillingworth and Dimsdale. And she's going there to deliver a pair of gloves that the governor had ordered, some embroidered gloves. Uh, but in reality, she's going there to try to make sure that the governor does not take away Pearl from Hester. She has heard that that's being discussed and that they um, are debating whether or not Pearl should be removed from the home. The chapter begins with Pearl and Hester still struggling in the town, still being used as an example by the townspeople. They point to her, they point to a uh, little pearl, they point to Hester as an example of sin to show the, the kids in the community don't be like this woman of the Scarlet Letter. Uh, the children of the community, they are really mean to Pearl. They say things such as, let us fling mud at them. And when Pearl hears this, remember Pearl is just three years old and she's the wild child. Uh, Pearl raises her fist and shouts and screams at them, uh, much like the sound a witch might make, is how uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne uh, explains it. So Hester has heard that there is this movement to have Pearl removed and uh, taken away from Hester, and Hester being Mama Bear, of course, is not going to have anything to do with that. And so she goes to deliver these embroidered gloves. She knocks on the door. The servant answers the door and says, well, the, the governor is busy. He's, he has a, um, a delegation there, and he can't be bothered. But Hester says, nevertheless, I will enter. And so this really is important because it shows her determination. Uh, it strengthens her character and shows that she will not back down even from the governor. Throughout chapter 7, you see lots and lots of references to light, to reflection, to glistening and glittering and radiance and gleaming and things being reflected. So um, Nathaniel Hawthorne's creating this, um, this extended um, symbolic reference to the Scarlet Letter. You'll see it at the end of this chapter um, when uh, Pearl is, uh, they finally do get into the governor's mansion and Pearl points to a, a suit of armor hanging on the wall and says to her mother to look at the suit of arm, armor, which is reflecting their images. But the image that Hester sees is distorted. This, uh, her scarlet letter is uh, reflected back in gigantic uh, proportions, out of proportion to really what it should be. And this is important because it shows you how, um, how this... Scarlet Letter has come to dominate Hester's life. Finally, at the end of Chapter 7, the Governor's Hall, Pearl scampers off into the garden of the Governor's Mansion. And by the way, Governor's Hall is um, just a synonym for mansion. But she sees this wild rose bush growing in the garden, and she points to the roses. She wants one of them. She wants to take one of these red roses. And, and this is obviously connecting us back to the beginning of the book uh, in chapter 1. So we go into chapter 8, and we find the governor with um, a kindly and elderly minister, uh, Reverend Wilson, along with Chillingworth and Dimsdale. It's an interesting collection of people, and they, are all, they have already been discussing this uh, issue of whether or not to take Pearl away from Hester. And they mention, oh, here she is, the, the woman that we were talking about. And so they begin to question Pearl. They ask her um, uh, questions about her appearance, and uh, they also turn to Hester and ask her questions about uh, whether, you know, what's the purpose? Why would Pearl need to stay with you, and Hester says, 
that basically Hes uh, Pearl is a daily reminder of the Scarlet Letter, and the Scarlet Letter reminds her daily as well of her uh, punishment. So then they turn to Pearl and they ask her this question, Canst thou tell me, my child, who made thee? So basically it's the question that Hester had said to Pearl earlier in the book um, regarding her Heavenly Father. Well, Pearl, being Pearl, of course, she responds that she was not made, she was not created um, from, by, by God, and that she, in fact, was plucked off the, fro the, the rose bush in the, uh, by the prison door. Well, this is the worst answer she can give. The governess says that, 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 okay, that's it. We don't need to go any further. We know that she needs to be removed from Hester because she can't even answer this question about who made her. Um, Hester, becoming desperate, she turns to Dimsdale. Now, this is interesting. Dimsdale has been, he withdrew himself into the shadows of the curtain. So he's, he's in shadows. And that's a symbolic action if you think about it. He's removing himself from the light and hiding in the shadows. And Hester says, speak thou for me to Dimsdale. And Dimsdale reluctantly steps out of the shadows with his hand covering his heart. Again, another symbolic gesture. And he starts to plead for Hester's case, saying that um, there's nothing better for Hester than to keep Pearl with her mother as a daily reminder of her sin, and um, they will both help each other get to heaven. That's his, his defense. So Chillingworth is, of course, standing there, observing this entire scene. And remember, this is Hester's long-lost husband, who Hester promised to keep his identity secret. So she's actually keeping the secret of two men, um, two men's identities. And Chillingworth observes, and he says, You speak, my friend, with a strange earnestness. And, of course, an earn, um, earnestness means a strange effort or a seriousness. So it's like he's stroking his beard and thinking, Hmm, this is very interesting that you would have such passion and a, a passionate plead on behalf of Hester and Pearl. So he's beginning to suspect this may be my man. And then at that point, Dimsdale steps back into the shadow of the curtain, withdraws himself from the light and into the shadow again, a symbolic action. But what's interesting then at the end of the chapter is um, Pearl, who's three years old, she gently, in a very gentle moment, she steps in, uh, into the shadow with Dimsdale, and they have a moment, they have a bond between the two of them. And Dimsdale bends over and kisses Pearl gently on the forehead. So there's a connection there, Dimsdale and Pearl.